Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my first watch through of Star Trek the original series season two. Today's episode is called the Omega Glory and I'm really excited to see where our adventures are going to take us today. Thank you guys for watching as always. I really really appreciate you everybody who leaves comments likes the videos and yeah, you guys are awesome. With that being said, let's do this. Approaching planet Omega 4, sir. Another vessel in planet orbit, Captain. Lieutenant, sound alert. Hi, no, sir. All decks report ready, sir. Long range. What is this thing? By Sulu. I've never seen it move like that. She was patrolling in this area six months ago. The sensors indicate no damage to the vessel, Captain. We'll board and investigate. So I guess it's irregular that they this particular ship would still be here six months later. Very quiet. Y you would think the engineering room would have a bunch of people in there, working. Just the uniforms left. As if they were in them when... They turned into ice cubes? No. Salt. Some kind of crystal? <laughs> Always pumps me up for the episode, the intro. So they act as if they were surprised this to find Captain them still Kirk here. Of the USS Enterprise. Is there anyone on board? You would think that Starfleet would like know that they didn't report back or anything, or maybe they've been looking for this ship for six months. But wouldn't they look here first? Doctor McCoy and I are going to the bridge. Meet us there. It's like they were all just doing their normal duties and. Jim, the crew didn't leave. They're still here. What do you mean? These white crystals, that's what's left of the human body when you take the water away. Okay. Their last log entry, Captain. On screen. If, if you've come aboard this ship, you're dead, man. Oh. Don't go back to your own ship. It's contagious. Get down there fast, Captain Tracy. Oh, jeez. Prepare to beam down to the planet's surface, fast. Yeah, real fast. <laughs> Off with his head? Put the axe away, Li Yang. That's Ron Tracy. Oh, the captain? No more of this, Wu. Lock up the savages. They carry fireboxes. The prisoners are called Yangs. Impossible even to communicate with. Interesting that the villagers know about phasers. What happened? The villagers, the cones here, were friendly enough once they got over the shock of my white skin. As you've seen, we resemble the Yangs, the savages. The landing party had taken an unknown disease back. My entire crew gone. Yes, I know we saw it. And I'm just as infected as they were. So how come you're not dead? There's some natural immunization that protects everyone on the planet's surface. So he's just been stuck here. None of us will ever leave this planet. That's interesting. Well, good thing we got McCoy and Spock here and, and Kirk, but yeah, the sciencey guys will figure it out. A growing belief that Captain Tracy has been interfering with the evolution of life on this planet. I think it'd be kind of hard for him not to if he's stuck there forever, even if he tried. But something is immunizing us down here, thank heavens, or we'd have been dead hours ago. The infection resembles one developed by Earth during their bacteriological warfare experiments in the 1990s. The 90s again. The 90s were a crazy time. According to this... The Yang Lions, Doctor. He got attacked? Spock, do you see any hope that these Yangs can be reasoned with? Or... No, Captain. They're too wild. Captain Tracy's reserve belt packs. Empty found among the remains of several hundred Yang bodies. So he's been killing them? Starfleet should be made aware. Uh-oh. I'll be sending the next message, Jim. He says, I'm do- I'm gonna- Oh! He says, <laughs> That was- I understand him wanting to- not be interfered with with wh how he's been dealing with this situation and to like protect himself and whatever but that was uncalled for 
I guess he's thrown all regulations and hope out the window. He's in survival mode. Enterprise, come in. Your captain in a landing party must have beamed down too late for full immunization. They've been found unconscious, but I'm doing everything I can for them now. Sir, this is Lieutenant Sulu. No! I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Your captain's feverish, quite delirious. I'll contact you later, let you know of any future needs. Landing party out. Oh, boy. One of the most experienced captains to this. That's enough of that, Captain. It's a wonder he hasn't shot Kirk already. Why? No native to this planet has ever had any trace of any kind of disease. Tell Captain Kirk your age. Age? Wu is 462 years old. I don't think lack of disease would cause that long of a lifespan. We must have a doctor researching this. Virtual immortality. That's why he's keeping them alive. By those who own the serum. McCoy will eventually isolate it. When we're ready, we'll bargain for a whole fleet of ships to pick us up. And they'll do it. Yes, I suppose they will. It's a very interesting proposition. Let me think it all. It's quite interesting. But it's not gonna fly. I see where he's coming from, though. Whoa! This guy's got some moves. So effortlessly took Kirk down. That is... <laughs> not, not many people could do that animals who happen to look like us i don't think we have the right or the wisdom to interfere with however a planet is evolving mm -hmm. put him in there well i guess he doesn't want kirk alive that bad maybe he just feels like he needs mccoy to find out the secret of their longevity there's that familiar music again like an etch-a-sketch or something <laughs> I was just thirsty you see don't they have a rest should they wish to do so one could always rest while the other keeps you occupied thank you Spock <laughs> sorry I asked at least tell me why you want to kill me good captain try to reason with them but they don't understand what he's saying, probably. <laughs> trying to reason with didn't last very long. Keep trying, Captain. The behavior is highly illogical. Quite aware of it. <laughs> I like how Spock is probably quite worried, but he knows that there's really nothing he could do from there. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> right as I said that! <laughs> but he calmly, like you know, figures out what the best course of action would be. And if it were McCoy in that situation, he'd be screaming and... And you can't teach me that. Probably being highly unhelpful. I have tried, Captain. <laughs> Look. Not now, Spock. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it while it's still hot. Captain, I've managed to loosen this grill somewhat. Keep working on the window if we're ever going to regain our freedom. Freedom. They do understand? The worship word. Yang worship. They will not speak it. It is our worship word, too. We live with the cones. Am I not now? prisoner of the combs as you are yeah <laughs> also he doesn't look like them though he does look like the the guy who's been supplying them with uh, phasers so <laughs> oh look at that they're working together how did you not speak until now yeah good question <sighs> you speak to combs only for killing <laughs> Have you out in a minute? Oh! Damn, he's strong. Look at he broke the whole cement. That was easy. He never thought to try that before. He 
did that in like five seconds. I wonder if the, I don't remember what they're called, but the, the savages have tried to maybe uh, reason with the other side in the past and it's never worked. So they just gave up trying. Spock, how long? Seven hours and eight minutes, Captain. Wow. And no one's come to check on them in that time? Keith. What if they have to go to the bathroom? They just piss on the floor? Oh, good morning, Jim. Good morning. <laughs> I'm convinced that once there was a frightening biological war that existed here. As nature built up these natural immunizing agents in the food, the water, and the soil. These immunizing agents take time. And we can leave any time we want to. There are people here over a thousand years old, Bond. Survival of the fittest. Then anything you develop here as a result of all this is useless. Lengthen lives, poppycock. I can do more for you if you just eat right and exercise regularly. Here, here. <laughs> so it's it's a genetic thing. Oh boy. He's no mess. Oh man, he's been fighting the hard against the invasion, huh? He killed thousands. Still came. He's fully immunized now. We all are. You've isolated the serum. There's no serum! There's no miracles! There's no immortality here! I think I've just made a realization. You found no fountain of youth here. People live longer here now because it's natural for them to. <laughs> Outside. I thought this guy looked familiar. He's from Dagger of the Mind. I can't believe it took me this long to realize. Right? Call your ship. I need your help, Kirk. Yeah. They're going to attack the village. My phaser is almost drained. We need new fresh ones. This is a we mess. We can beam up, Tracy. All of us. Just leave. Just go. Go with Kirk. You could get off this place. I'd like 10 phasers beamed down. But surely you know that can't be done without verification. Not even if we're in danger, Mr. Sulu? Yeah, not even if you're in danger. What is your situation? The situation is not immediately dangerous. <laughs> it's just so crazy that this actor, he's, I just didn't catch that it was him. Like he's so well at portraying a completely different person that he's appears to be a completely different person until you see it and then you can't unsee it. Whoa! How did he do that? Whoa! Axe against basket. What a win. Oh, there you go. Uh oh. Who's there? These guys. Okay, maybe now we can learn a little bit about the history of what happened between these two people. Because it sounds like the other side might have been the initial if my aggressors. my were forced out of the cities, into the deserts, the hills. I see, Captain. Living like Indians. Finally even looking like the American Indian. Yanks? Yanks? Spock? Hmm? Yankees. Communists. Communists. That which is ours is ours again. It will never be taken. So they were just trying to reclaim the land that was originally theirs. What? <laughs> what? United States flag? Huh? We can be handled, Jim. Together it'll be easy. Don't fight me here. I'll win. Would you just shut up? I'll drag you down with me. Would you just be quiet? I am Cloud William. Guardian of the Holies. What is ours is ours again. They worship freedom. America. It all makes sense now. I pledge I allegiance to the, the flag. Dragon. One nation under God. Indivisible. <laughs> what Liberty is and happening? For all. How did... He spoke the holy word. How did this happen? Why are you here? Were you cast out? He was cast out. See his servant. His face. His eyes, his ears. I'll leave the ears alone. It's always the ears. 
Do the Yang legends describe the servant of the evil one? Yeah, he's likening uh, Kirk to the serpent in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> it's literally Spock. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Are your faces alike? Can you tell from them which of you is good and which of you is evil? Don't judge by appearances. He has no heart. Yeah, he does. It's just His heart is it's over here. You're too high. A little bit lower. He has no heart. One of them lies. But which? There is a way. Greatest of holies. The evil one's tongue would surely turn to fire. E plenista norco forcom perfectunum. Is that Latin? Those words are familiar. Wait a moment. He fears to speak. Kill his servant unless he speaks. Wait! Does not your sacred book promise that good is stronger than evil? So they're gonna fight? 1v1? The fight is done when one is dead. Kirk's looking at him like, come on, dude. We don't have to do this. <laughs> They're tied together, and there's one knife. Oh. We gotta do something. I'm open to suggestions, Doctor. <laughs> what is he thinking? I'm making a suggestion. A mental telepathic suggestion. Come on, Kirk. I know you can't do any rolls or drop kicks, but I'm sure you have something up your sleeve. What is he suggesting her to do? Ooh. He's got the knife. To give, throw the communicator to Kirk or, or to give it to Spock? You call it a suggestion. <laughs> we call it mind control. Okay, cut the rope. Oh. Kill him. Good. Must destroy evil. Zulu? Yeah! Sir, we picked up communicator signals. We'll discuss that later, Lieutenant. You are a great God's servant. We are your slaves. Get up. And you would not say the holy words. I did not recognize those words. You said them so badly. <laughs> Without meaning. Only the eyes of a chief. They see the Eve Plebnista. <laughs> He's like a step aside, old man. Hear me. Hear this? Among my people, we carry many such words as this. Look at these three words written larger than the rest. We the people. Of the United States. Of the United States. Ordain and establish this constitution. These words were not written only for the Yangs, but for the Koms as well. The Koms? They must apply to everyone, or they mean nothing. I like that. I was afraid they were going to paint the other people as evil. But the holy words will be obeyed. I swear it. How did they get that? Somebody came before... But does our involvement here also constitute a violation of the Prime Directive? Somebody already gave them the Constitution and the flag. Liberty and freedom have to be more than just words. Or are they saying that these people, independently of Earth, have created the exact same... There's no way. What? <laughs> Well, that episode took a very surprising turn for me. A very uh, patriotic episode. Again, they're drawing parallels to our world in this series. I'm not really sure how the Yang side got the Constitution of the United States of America or the American flag, but... I don't think they created it on their own, but I mean, I guess it's not an impossibility, but a very, very slim chance. So I'm not sure if they were trying to say that they invented it on their own 
separately from the people of Earth or somebody violated the Prime Directive long time before the other starship arrived six months ago. If that's the case, then the Prime Directive has already been broken and violated. So I think Kirk is in the clear regardless, no matter what. But I'm kind of confused about that. It wouldn't be the first time that I've finished one of these episodes and immediately just feels a little bit confused. I'm sure watching it again will um, shed some light on some things. But feel free to explain and, and uh, give me some more context and maybe uh, point out some dialogue that I missed because... It definitely happens. I really can't believe that it took me so long to recognize the actor from Dagger of the Mind. That was something that I couldn't stop kind of fixating on because definitely from the Dagger of the Mind episode, I feel like that actor and his performance and the Vulcan mind meld like just got really ingrained in my mind. And that's kind of the thing that stands out to me the most. Or is the most memorable from that episode i really enjoyed that character actor and so i'm i was kind of like and i still am kind of beating myself up that i didn't recognize him immediately but he looks and feels so different this character feels so different from the other characters so again it just shows how good of an actor he is i'll have to look up his name afterwards but i guess it wasn't until kind of later in the episode when he got that wild look in his eyes and that just those piercing blue eyes and I think the lighting later on in the episode really brought out his eyes and super cool I don't know just I really love that I think this is a tale of caution to not warp the words that the founding fathers wrote for the country and to not lose our way as citizens of the United States of America to not stray too far from what the what was meant when those words were first penned and how any kind of written word or edict or anything that's written with any kind of meaning can be twisted and changed over time and interpreted in different ways over time when they introduced the yangs at first as savage people that have like no hope of coming to any sort of reason or communication, I immediately thought that they were probably just misunderstood and that's definitely the case, but I'm glad that they didn't paint either side as good or evil, that in the end, as we know, as we've been taught over these episodes, that there is good and evil in any group of people and there is good and evil in any one individual and, and that a lot of times the main issue is that we don't understand one another. I've never really been super big on politics, so I think you guys are going to have to do some of the heavy lifting here in the comments, trying to dissect all the different messages and themes in this episode. I gave you what I have, so now I want you guys to expand on that. Of course, I would love to hear what you guys think from your perspectives. And that's all I have on this one for now. I, I don't really know how I feel about this one because, I mean, I had a lot of fun. It was great to see Kirk fighting. It was great to see the returning actor. I was so invested in what was happening and what, what was going to be the outcome. I guess what I'm trying to say is I really enjoyed it, but I'm not really exactly sure why. <laughs> and so I'm a little bit confused. But anyways, rambling again, rambling again. So sorry. I'll see you guys next time. I look forward to reading all your comments and have a good one. Bye bye.